Now for this next part, we're asked to find a vector equation for the line L. And when it says find a vector equation for the line L, there's several possibilities. What we're looking for is the position vector of any general point on this line, which is often denoted by the letter R. So if I was looking, say, at this point here, this would be the position vector generally called R. But R can be, as I say, any point from the origin going to the line L. Now to get that position vector, we should be familiar with the vector equation of any line L. What it is, is this. And if you're unsure of this, you can always go to the tutorials on my website. But essentially, if you've got a line L and you want to find the position vector R of any point on it, then you've got to know a fixed point, let's say A, with position vector A. And you've also got to know a vector B, say, that is parallel to the line. And that means that the equation of the line is given by R equals A plus any amount, which we've called this scalar variable here, lambda, any amount of this vector B. So we can put this into practice then to do this question. And we can come up with, say, two immediate solutions. And I'll do both of the possible solutions for you. So we'll start then with the position vector of any point on the line, R. And we need to have a fixed point on the line. Well, we've got two in this case. We've got either A or we've got the point B. So if we take A first of all, then R is going to equal O to A. So we can write that in as the vector 1 minus 3, 2, plus any amount, we will call it lambda, in the direction of the line. We need a vector that is parallel to the line. Well, in the previous part, we worked out the vector A to B. That's a vector that's parallel to the line L. So if we took that, then we can write it either as a column vector or we could write it in I's, J's and K's. But since I've started using column vectors, we'll carry on with that. So it'd be lambda multiplied by minus 3, 5, minus 3. OK, so that's one version. Another version that you could come up with would be that R equals, instead of going from O to A, we go O to B. So it would be O to B, which is the vector minus 2, 2, minus 1. And then I would normally write plus lambda, but being in the same video, I'm going to choose another variable scalar, Greek letter mu, OK? But again, it's up to you. You might want to use S here. And uh, if that was the case, I might have used T here. So again, totally up to you. But it would be plus mu times a vector parallel to the line L, which again could be AB. So it's minus 3, 5, minus 3. So there's two possibilities for writing down a vector equation for the line L. What are the other possibilities? Well, you'd still need to take either A or B as your point on the line. But when it comes to a vector that is parallel to L, you could take, say, the negative of your vector AB. 3 minus 5, 3 would be a vector. You could take any multiple of this, double it, for instance. OK, so that's why they're saying find a vector equation of the line L. There's not a particular one. It's also worth mentioning just in this video, I feel, just as a reminder that just suppose you are looking at this point here, then if we were using this equation, lambda would be most probably about 2 because you'd go up to here and then you would do two lots of the vector AB to get to this particular point. Whereas if you were using this version, mu would be, say, 1. 
because you'd go from here O to B followed by one lot of the vector A to B. So O to B followed by one lot of that vector would take you to that point there. Okay, so I just thought that would be worth mentioning so you can see again, just as a reminder, how this works. Okay, well that's uh, the end of this part of the question then.